So today we'll be unboxing Gigabyte's Cream of the Cream for 890FX motherboard. So this is their highest end AMD motherboard for the moment. That means that it has support for AMD's Phenom 2 X6, X4, or really anything else that fits in an AM3 socket should you so desire. It, as I said before, it uses the 890FX chipset, so that means you've got support for Crossfire X up to four-way. So actually, why don't we go through all of Gigabyte's uh, interesting technologies they've got outlined on the front. This is a new thing, on-off charge. That means that there are certain USB ports on the board that will actually support charging attached USB devices. In this case, they've got an iPhone attached to it, even when the computer is off. And one of the reasons they're able to do that is due to their 333 te technology, which is USB Power 3X. So they've really updated the way that they deliver power to the USB ports. They deliver three times the specified power capability. I mean, you're not going to be over juicing all of your components, but it can provide up to three times the amount of power even while the system's off. Very cool. You've also got support for USB 3 as well as SATA 3 as part of their 333 thing. You also have a three-year warranty. They should call it like 3333 in Canada. And Ultra Durable 3. It should be like five threes. How, how many more three things can we do? Uh, okay, I don't see much else. They've got auto unlock, so that means that you can do core unlocking on this motherboard, which I have covered a couple of times in the past how to do that. Four-way crossfire, uh, SATA 3, 6 gig. Oh, right, it has uh, Southbridge 850, so that means you've got six SATA 3 ports. So that is supported natively by AMD's chipset. Uh, Gigabyte actually did not have to add a third-party chipset to this particular motherboard, like they have to on the Intel boards. So over here, we've got some more outlines of the Mostly the same features, but here's a different one. Silent, hybrid Silent Pipe 2. So this is a little like tower heat... Well, I shouldn't say little. It's a huge tower heat sink thing that you strap to the north bridge in order to get better cooling. Uh, in my experience with the old X58 Extreme, it wasn't necessary, but it did provide better cooling to the north bridge as well as the MOSFETs because it's all connected by heat pipes. Uh, on the back, I don't see... Oh, okay, onboard quick switch. So you've got onboard switches, you've got an onboard debug LED, uh, dual LAN ports, and that pretty much covers everything that I see on the back here. Okay, cool. So let's get this opened up. There we go. Just opening up the box. I love Gigabyte's high-end boxes. They just, like... They're a little bit busy, you know, but... They cover everything so well, it makes my life easier. I don't think I ever said what the board's called. It's the 890FXA UD7. So UD7 puts it right up in the top tier of Gigabyte motherboards. All right, let's get this open. So I'm going to take the board away from your interested eyes first here, and then we'll have a look at the accessories that are included first. So, okay, I haven't seen Gigabyte do an accessory box like this before. This is kind of unique. So you pull it apart like this, and then you can see what is inside. So we have a user's ma oh, we have a sticker. There's a powered by Gigabyte sticker. Okay, then we have a user's manual as well as a driver and utilities DVD. So you should download the latest off the site. Don't use this DVD. And then in here, this is uh, fully in English, so it covers everything from BIOS configuration to probably even installing drivers and uh, some basic troubleshooting, all that good stuff. Where to plug in all of your front headers. I think I missed one here. Here is the multilingual installation guidebook. So this covers the physical installation and is in a variety of different languages. And inside there, I also found a Dolby Home Theater sticker. Very nice. Okay. In the other side of this uh, pack here, I have more stuff. So first, I have a Crossfire Bridge. Cross, space, fire. Okay, that's very interesting. And the top is unlabeled. And then I have another Crossfire Bridge. Right, okay, I guess you could potentially need uh, a couple of bridges if you're going to be configuring quad Crossfire. Okay, next we have some SATA cables. Ooh, these are nice, actually. Gigabyte's moving away, well, partially, from their yellow SATA cables to something that actually matches the motherboard. Go figure. Beautiful. I love it. Two straight and two right angle, and then we've also got an IDE cable included. Next, we have their eSATA bracket. I really like these things. It's a very convenient way to just add more eSATA cables, or add, add more eSATA ports to your computer, and then there's also a little power thing, as well as an external power adapter. So this is one Molex to two SATA power. So with this bracket and this cable, you can plug in two external hard drives. 
very cool. And they also include uh, two eSATA cables for you as well. This is a far more complete kit than they used to include. Next we've got an IO shield, which uh, handily labels all of the interesting stuff on the back. So uh, that's okay, we'll cover that more later. Okay, let's get this motherboard opened up here. Okay, got a little plastic thing on top. Then we have the hybrid pipe. Chew, let me see if I can get this out. Yeah, you can probably see it pretty good anyway. So here's what you do. You shake it, so there's thermal compound included as well as four screws. And so, see these four holes right here? Those are gonna strap onto the north bridge right about where that water block is located right now. So Gigabyte gives you the option, and it comes with the water block installed by default, of either, and this is why it's called hybrid, using this big tower heat pipe cooler thing, which actually mounts to a PCI bracket at the back. Okay, so then it mounts onto here, and then goes all the way to the back of the, uh, the motherboard like this. Okay, it looks like that. Okay, or you can leave the default water cooling solution on, which is an all copper affair, so you don't have to worry about it gunking up your, uh, your, uh, your water loop uh, if you have to, you know, hook on any other blocks up to it. And then, I don't know where I was going with that. It has included water cooling, okay? 3 8 inch barbs, so it'll be compatible with most high-end water cooling systems as long as you're not using overkill half-inch barbs. Here's a little USB 3 sticker. Okay, let's have a look at the layout of the board. In the center, we find in its ideal location the AM3 socket surrounded by an AM3 bracket. This board uses 8 plus 2 phase power, as I recall. Uh, but I can double check that before I wrap up the video if I remember. In the top left corner we've got our 8-pin power in its ideal location. We've got CPU fan. Uh, this board does not use 4-pin uh, fan connectors all over, so that's a feature that's pretty cool, but not included on this one. We've got two dual channel sets of DDR3 memory support, so that's going to support up to 16 gigs of RAM with uh, current 4 gig DIMMs. Then we have onboard power and reset switches. This is a breath of fresh air. That is the right place for an onboard switch, because when you've got four graphics cards installed, which, you know, if you have a lot of money, you would, most of the onboard switches are down here. You got a graphics card here. How are you going to access it? No, this is perfect because here you're plugging in the 24 pin connector. There won't be anything else around there. Very nice. Then we've got an IDE cable, floppy cable connector. Then down, moving a little bit further, we've got a clear CMO switch covered by a little protective plastic cover. This is also a much better location for this than I've seen many times in the past. While it's not quite as good as the back panel, it's way better than having like, you know, some stupid little jumper hidden like here, which I've seen many, many, many times. Okay, next we've got our SATA ports. So this is SATA 2 right here. We've got two SATA 2 ports, so you can use those for your optical drives or anything where you don't care how fast they go. And then you've got six SATA 3 6 gigabit per second ports. Very nice. Here's our onboard debug LED and uh, yeah. Someone was knocking on the door, but I think they figured out that I'm shooting a video right now. Here's our front panel connectors as well as our front USB uh, one, two, three. We've got three front headers for USB. Then we have one front header for FireWire and one for COM. Okay. All right. PCI Express configuration. This is where it starts to get interesting. You see all these little chips in here? Those are going to be splitting apart the PCI Express lanes provided with this chipset. So if you want to run two 16x cards at 16x speed, you're going to be using this top port and then this one down here. So if you're running dual crossfire, you're going to cover up these two and these two. So that will leave you a PCI Express 8x port, a PCI Express 4x port, as well as a PCI Express 8x port. Okay? So just, just to be clear, if you're running 4, you're going to cover this one again here. So you'll be running in 16x, 8x, 16x, and 8x. And it's quite possible that it's going to split it 8888, but I'm not actually 100% sure. Either way, as long as you're running 8x or above, you are not going to run into any performance disadvantages. So let's just have a quick look at the cooling solution on the Southbridge. I mean, that's a pretty weak cooler, but it looks really neat. And since that Southbridge doesn't kick off a whole lot of heat, it totally doesn't matter. I like it. Then we've got our Northbridge cooling solution here, which uh, I've talked about enough, I think. And then our MOSFET cooler. So that cools the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 plus 2 phase power design on this 
this motherboard. Now let's have a quick look at our IO shield at the back. So USB 2.0 ports. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now these are those USB 2.0 slash eSATA ports. So we've actually got two eSATA ports on the back and then they include that bracket. You can have up to four eSATA ports on this board. Very cool. We have a PS2 mouse keyboard combo port, digital audio out in both optical and coaxial flavors, firewire, another firewire, two gigabit ethernet, USB 3.0 as well as 7.1 audio. Now I wish they labeled which USB ports can be used for charging, but I guess I'll go ahead and assume that at least some of them can, and uh, too bad for me. Thank you for checking out my unboxing of the 890 FXA UD7 from Gigabyte.